Darling, just what do you think you're doing? Oh, please, not this again. Don't look at me like that. Like what? Darling, you're looking at me as if I'm about to kill you. Oh, for the love of... No, I am not going to kill you, darling. Although if you're worried about that, you should invest in some better locks for your windows. Who I am is not important, darling. Well, not nearly as important as why I am here. What are you doing? Don't tell me that you're not doing anything. I know what you are doing. I was asking so that you wouldn't be as frightened or evasive. Show it to me. Show me what you are using. Darling, unless you really do want to die, I would recommend that you change your tone and do as I say. I will explain myself once you have shown me what I asked to see. There now, was that really so difficult? Oh, really? And why exactly is it so difficult? You don't want to be lectured. Darling, I'm not here to lecture you about this. At least, most likely not in the way you're thinking. Why did I want to see what you were using, then? Well, I think this ought to be where I explain myself. First and foremost... My name is Grell Sutcliffe, my dear. It is a pleasure to finally make your acquaintance. And, as for why I wanted to see what you were using, I recently came into possession of some rather concerning information regarding you. Oh, no, no, darling. Your family didn't approach me with any concerns, nor did any of your friends. No, I acquired your information through another method. Darling, I don't believe you want the answer to that question. At least, not yet. You won't cooperate unless I tell you. Very well, then. However, I would like you to cooperate as I explain. Will you allow me to examine and clean your wounds? Why should you trust me to know how to do that? Darling, I'm going to begin my explanation now. And... Do try your hardest not to faint, would you? Why would you need to do that? Because even in death, the marks we leave on ourselves, they don't disappear. Oh yes, darling. I used to be rather similar to you. I experienced a rather similar feeling to the one that caused you to do this. I know how to take care of wounds like this. So, if you wish to prove that you will cooperate in exchange for information, I would like you to allow me to treat your wounds. You can trust me. I swear to it. I am here to keep you alive, not to kill you. Very good, darling. Now, I shall explain myself as I do this. After all, a distraction might serve you well while you're dealing with the pain of these. Now then, as for why I came here, I did not in fact come here to lecture you. Again, not in the way that you're most accustomed to, at least. 
I came here to warn you, in a manner of speaking. I was getting to that, darling, all in good time. Now, as I said, even in death the marks we leave on our bodies remain. As you might have assumed, once the shock faded, I am, in fact, deceased. No, darling, I am not a ghost. Good heavens, no! I am certainly not an angel. Far from it, in fact. No, I am not a demon, either. Although sometimes I wonder if my love life would have more advantages if I were, but that is beside the point. Demons are the creatures that torment the souls of sinners who do not repent, at least according to what the church says, and angels, they are the ones who watch after the sinners who have repented, and who have faith in the glory of heaven or whatever. But what I am, I am something that the church has no idea about. No, no, I'm not any sort of spectre, not a ghost nor a poltergeist. I am what is known as a reaper. We take the souls of those who are destined to die. We essentially kill them, although usually someone else does the work for us. We just swoop in at the last minute and take their soul. And a little bit of the credit sometimes. However, we were all once human, just like you. Although, we died in a very specific way. And that is what caused us to become reapers. How did we die? Darling. Take a closer look at my arm. I think you'll find that something there isn't quite like yours. Yes, darling. Those who take their own lives, whether intentionally or unintentionally, they become reapers. Why am I telling you this? You are destined to die, rather soon, actually. And when I saw your name on the to-die list, I noticed something that I've rarely seen. Underlining your name was bright green ink, similar to the colour of my eyes, darling. And do you know what that means? Yes, darling. It means that once your soul is reaped, you will become like me. Which means that either intentionally or unintentionally, you will die by your own hand. I know, darling. I know that you are currently not at a stage where you are considering doing this intentionally. That is why I came here. You are in a rather similar situation to the one that I was in many, many years ago. What do I mean? You do this as a release, don't you? You want to distract yourself from the pain in your head, so you cause pain to your body. It works for a while. It satisfies your need to feel something else. However, it doesn't last long.
does it? It feels like you'll never be able to stop. Darling, you needn't deny it. I was once in the exact same situation. I know exactly how you feel. I'm not going to judge you for the way that you feel. There. Doesn't it feel good to finally say it? To finally have someone who understands how you feel? Darling, you have no idea what I would have given to have this when I was in your position. I always felt so, so alone in my suffering. I couldn't speak with anyone. I couldn't... I couldn't go to anyone for help because... because what caused my pain was something that no one wanted to talk about. Something that, if I tried to talk about it, it would have only made things worse. I will explain that in a moment. But darling, for now, I need you to tell me something. It's all right. Take a deep breath. I want you to be completely honest with me. Do you have anyone, anyone at all, whom you can speak with about this? It's all right. Take your time, darling. You don't. I thought so. There's no shame in it, darling. Please, please, don't think that I am judging you for this. I went through this. I won't judge you for it. As for what you asked about, about what caused my grief, I was... I was created incorrectly. I have the soul and the mind of a woman. However, when I was born, I had a boy's body. Growing up, I... I wanted so badly for my family to see what I felt, to understand what I felt, but they didn't. I tried to explain it to them when I was older, but, but at the time, it wasn't something that most people accepted. It wasn't something that anyone even thought was possible. They thought that I was a disgrace. They disowned me. And when I returned to my home, I sought a release. I sought something to distract me from the pain in my heart. I was careless. I was... I was so focused on feeling better that I... I didn't realize where the cut had been made. 
I didn't realize how deep it was. For a moment, I almost felt better. But then, when I realized that there was no peace even after death, not for someone like me, I realized that I should have been more careful. What's it like being a reaper? It is... It is not for people like you. Someone like me... I was always... A rather concerning individual. Due to my... Mental stability, or lack thereof. I had seen so many awful things in the time that I lived, that it didn't truly bother me what I had to do now. However, for you, I have learned Every aspect of your life, darling. I have learned about everything that makes you, you. You are not someone who deserves to suffer. Hardly anyone is. Those who truly deserve to suffer like this. They are the ones who die of old age. They're the ones who get to sleep peacefully. But you... You suffer alone. You turn to pain for a release. And you aren't careful. Darling... You are destined to make the same mistake I did, and I cannot allow that. You are a kind soul, a soul who, who deserves so much better than an eternity of pain and misery. You don't deserve the guilt of taking lives. You don't deserve the kind of pain it causes you. I know, darling. I know that you're in pain now. But you won't be any longer. No! No, darling, that is not what I meant. No, heavens no. I am not going to kill you. How many times must I say that? My apologies. I I do suppose I seem a bit threatening when I bring a weapon with me wherever I go, but that is a job requirement. Regardless, darling... I am not going to kill you. Instead, I am going to offer you something that I think would have helped me when I was you. And I believe that, since we are so similar, it could help you. What I'm going to offer you, darling, is me. I know what you are going through. I've been through it myself. I've had decades to learn from my mistakes. And I know a thing or two that could help you. 
So, any time you feel overwhelmed, any time you you need to get that release, I want you to call my name. I will drop everything I am doing, and I will come to you in an instant. I will hold you. I will listen to you if you need to talk. And and if you need a release still, I can give you plenty of far safer methods. I can I can be your for lack of a better term, friend. I can be your friend. And I can make certain that you never, ever risk sharing the same fate as me. Why am I so intent on keeping you alive? Darling, it's because you deserve it. No matter what you think, no matter how bad the pain gets, please don't ever forget that. You deserve to live. And I will be damned if I let anything Take that away from you too soon.